it's lovely to see all of you this morning. We're going to do a flow for the kidney and urinary bladder meridian lines. Um, we've done one already. There's always several variations. This one is one of Sarah Powers. Um, and since we're at home, we'll actually be able to do the legs up the wall one, which we just kind of do in the middle of the air when we're in class. Let's slide forward. So let's see somewhere. Oh, Sanders here. Good. Love. And Danielle. Love to see you. Okay. Awesome. All right. <clears throat> um, so we're going to do a little bit shorter of uh, breathing and meditation and centering part because we'll do the second pose on our back as well. Um, so come to, uh, actually you might want to lie down this morning then so we can go directly into it. And um, the second pose is butterfly pose. So don't do butterfly pose when we're doing our meditation part. So lie down on your back, um, have your feet planted um, about hip width apart and let the inner knees rest together. So you're lying down like that. If you want, you can straighten your legs out at any time. You can start like that. You can stay like that the whole time. This is a little easier on the low back just to bend the legs and rest the inner knees together. Then we'll eventually just open the knees and do that. But for the meditation part, um, just keep your knees either together or your legs straight. Hands can be by your sides, palms up or down. They can be resting on your belly or one hand on your belly and one hand on your heart. Shrug your shoulders up to your ears. Now let them slide down your back away from your ears. Tuck your chin in slightly. That'll lengthen the back of the neck and let your eyes fall softly shut. Just settling into your space, onto your mat. <clears throat> let go of your morning thus far. Let go of today whatever's in store. Tell yourself you'll think about the busy thoughts once you step outside of your room. Let the anxieties melt away. For this next hour, just be. And it's just an hour for you, body, mind and spirit. Do a body scan. Take note if there are any areas that are maybe in need of a little extra care or attention. Areas on any level, physical or mental, spiritual, emotional. Issues may be weighing on your mind. And it's not that you'll dwell on whatever arises, but create that acknowledgement some space, maybe forgiveness for whatever it is. Perhaps when we check in again at the end of the class with how we feel, we may notice things have subtly shifted in sensation or perspective. And then become aware of your breath. Don't change anything, just notice it. Notice whereabouts in your chest that you're breathing how fast you're breathing, and whether you're breathing through your nose or your mouth, or a bit of both. And begin to breathe next in and out again through your nose. Hold the air in and follow its path up your nose, down your throat, into your lungs, and back out that same pathway. Notice how the breath is slowing down and it's deepening. Maybe you notice a difference in temperature at the rings of your nostrils. Cool as the air swirls in, warmth as it swirls back out. Start to even out the inhales and exhales. You can put a count to two or three, or use that mantra, I am breathing in, I am breathing out, matching the mantra or the numbers to your inhales and your exhales, allowing the breath to deepen as it wants to keep your shoulders relaxed. Feel how your ribs press into your mat on an inhale 
Think about the front of the ribs. Notice how they have room to expand and contract. Feel the circle of your rib cage expanding and contracting. Now go deeper. Look at your lungs, still counting or using the mantra. Feel, but also see them expand in those same four directions, fronts and backs, inner and outer sides, thicken as they take in air. And then watch those lungs contract as you exhale. Send your lungs some gratitude for being healthy. All the work that they do for us 24 hours a day. So this is your yogic breath. It's the main one that we use in yin. And it helps anchor our mind inside our body. It'll also act as an anchor, letting us know if we're maybe working too hard, pushing, or if we've just disappeared out of the room, out of our bodies, and we've lost this breath. It's a way to bring ourselves back. And it's also a way to figure out what you need to do to modify if you're having trouble keeping this full breath, because it is the most important part of yin or any style of yoga. And now just let your knees open. Foot soles are going to come together. If this pulls a little bit too much, then feel free at any time to reverse them back to the um, inner knees resting together. <clears throat> if it feels like it's a little bit too intense, remember you can always support under a thigh with a block or take a cushion or two and rest your knees on cushions even if you don't have a block or if the block doesn't feel quite comfortable enough. Steady breathing. In through your nose, back out through your nose. Remember in yin we're looking for an edge first of all. That's There's just the three principles, three tattvas. And so here, you're gonna find a little bit of discomfort pulling along the inner lines of the legs. That's the pathway of the urinary bladder meridian line runs up the inside of your legs. It actually starts in your pinky toe and comes along the outside of the foot for a little bit before going beneath the sole and coming to the arch crossing across the bottom of the foot so that it can run up the inside line. It enters the body at the groin. So this tugging that you're feeling there is another um, way to stimulate some of the trigger points along this meridian. Steady breathing, just like in the beginning. Feel those lungs expand and contract. So doing butterfly in a reclined position is different because we take out the forward bend. So we can really get in tune with what our hips are feeling and try to relax our legs. Even if you've got them propped on cushions, you can still make sure that they're totally relaxed as much as possible so you get that tugging sensation. we're always looking for an edge, this tugging sensation. <clears throat> a comfortable discomfort is a good way Bernie Clark describes it. And we try to soften our muscles, which is kind of contrary to what we want to do when we're in an uncomfortable pose or situation in life. The body is wanting to get out of there. The, our self is wanting to get out of it. But in yin, the second tattva, after we find this tugging, this discomfort, is stillness. So instead of taking off or getting out of it, we try to stay there and be still. Using your breath, in through your nose, back out through your nose, to 
try to calm you. Of course, we never stay where there's any kind of pain. You come out, you modify with the cushions, as I mentioned, blocks. I always give you lots of alternate things to do because with these longer holds, time being the third tattva, you don't want to stay with any kind of pain. We want to just stay, find it that tugging, that discomfort that's manageable. Your breath will let you know. Just a few more breaths. The other part of the stillness is the inner stillness, paying attention to what we're feeling, noticing subtle letting goes or shifts. Now on your next inhale, Bring your knees back together, help them with your hands if you like. Set your foot, leave your foot soles on your mat. Just enjoy that ah uh, feeling that you get when you bring them back up again. And then usually straightening out one leg at a time feels good for releasing those hip joints. Stay still again for a few breaths just to really enjoy and appreciate that rush of warmth through the hip joints, legs, maybe pressure that was on the ankles. And then give the legs a bounce, maybe rock from the top of the hips, maybe do some windshield wipers with your knees bent back and forth. And then turn to one side and help yourself up and um, perhaps onto all fours. Um, we're doing saddle pose next, but there's lots of ways to modify this because it's pretty intense on the knees. Saddle pose is the one where you sit between your heels like this. So that is not good for a lot of people, especially as we age, knees get a little more tender. Um, and maybe um, you're waiting for a knee replacement or a hip replacement or just have had one. So sit a block back there between your feet and sit on the block. Put two blocks there. Grab a cushion and elevate your um, hips even more if you like. You can take a rolled up um, blanket, quilt, set it behind your knees if you like and ease back there and that helps keep the knee joint open and um, not as, as hard on the ankles as either because a lot of people find this is really hard on your ankles. If elevating your hips you still can't seem to get into a comfy um, enough place here then do one leg at a time. So in that case you'll sit and um, we'll pull back in our right leg. So just lean to one side and pull the right leg in and we'll just do one leg mm -hmm. at a time then. So this is just a four minute hold. So you're only gonna get two minutes for each leg. So you probably won't get too far back. If you are doing both legs at a time, then don't move when I say it's time um, to switch. If you are doing both legs at a time and you know you get all the way down, it's nice to have a block back here so you can put it where your shoulder blades would probably end up. And then that helps keep the arch in your low back here as well, because you want to keep that, that lift through your chest. So whether you've got two legs going or your right leg is back and your left leg is straight, start to lean back. For those of you that um, have knee issues, I know my cousin was saying about hers that this, there's just no way this is going to happen and you feel like you're kind of crooked, sit on a block for sure so that you're up higher, sit on um, a pillow, um, even if the cushion isn't big enough or high enough, um, and then maybe the knee is not bent as much, maybe it's a little more out to the side, maybe it's a broken ankle you had in your past and so it doesn't want to turn. Um, there's all kinds of issues. So it's okay if the leg is out there like that. The point is that you're starting to get this inner rotation in your hip. Remember, you can also put something under your knee as well so that it doesn't have to have such an intense, um, don't let it for sure hang up in the air, okay? And then maybe you just stay here and it's all about your hip and you can feel this pull down the side of your leg, pull down the inside of your leg, a little bit of pressure on the side of your foot perhaps to your ankle, okay? Remember, if you're feeling it, you're doing it should not be ever off the charts and never any kind of pain, just tugging. How many times do we sit like this in our daily life? Like never. As kids we did, so it's been decades since a lot of us sat like this. But know that it does come back. 
always there's somewhere to go. And so those of you that are lying, starting to lie back, remember that the knees, you want to keep them on your mat, whether you've got one leg bent or both, and maybe you stay on your elbows. You can keep your head forward or you can let it go back. If you let it go back, leave it there. When we come up, you just leave it there and it'll be magically in line with your spine. So there's no torque on your neck there. Now, for those of you that are doing one leg, that's exactly what you're going to do. If your head is back, you're going to push into your hands and your elbows and come back up. If you've got two legs bent, you just stay where you are. Take your right leg, straighten it out, give it a little bounce, switch legs. If you're doing this, this is the people that are doing one leg. Lean back again, or maybe this leg is a little grumpier. Maybe you stay more upright this time. It's not about leaning back so much. It's of all of, mainly about the hip and those tugs that I mentioned, inner and outer legs, and getting that internal rotation. Once you get that and you're back, then it becomes more about, more about the back bend, especially if you've got that block behind you that you can rest on, then you can see, pull this gathered shirt, you've got this lovely back bend here. Knees don't have to be close together. They can be further apart as long as they're down. And if you are all the way back, go back towards the crown of your head and then you get that nice pull in your throat, which is great stimulus for the thyroid gland. Arms can be by your sides. They can be out to a T if you like. And maybe even if you find that you can I don't want to go right to the floor, but you can have them over your head, grab, clasp a wrist if you like, as long as that's not too intense. Remember, we're not working muscles. We're not pushing ever in the end. So go to your edge and stay there and breathe. You can use the ocean breath in this one. It's quite intense. that H-A sound, constriction in the back of your throat, but with your lips together, so you push it through your nose. Just a few more breaths. For those of you with two legs, we're here for about four and a half minutes, just takes that 30 seconds in the middle to switch legs. So we're here just a little bit longer than four minutes. All right, now listen carefully for how to come out. You want to use your core, so pull your tummy in. Think of your bottom rib coming to your pelvis. Push into those elbows. Leave your head back. Your hands pushing yourself all the way up, and then that's safe for your neck. Once you get all the way up, if both legs are bent, it's easy. Just come right on to all fours. If you had one leg bent, then bring it in so that you can join us on all fours and just stay still. Another intense pose, but a perfect opportunity to notice that rush of blood, coolness, warmth into those areas that were constricted. So important to pay attention because that's what's similar principles to um, deep tissue massage. And then do some cat cows here, arching your back, drop your head, look for your belly button, tuck your tailbone, drop the belly, spread the sit bones, look up. <clears throat> Go through three or four of these at your own pace. Match one breath to one movement. And that rush of blood nourishes the areas as well. So doing lots of good things to your body. End with a flat back when you're ready and then come right down onto your tummy. So we're going to do another back bend because back bends are wonderful for the urinary bladder meridian line. It runs on either side of your spine. So anytime we do forward and back bending, we're targeting this line. It goes down the back of each leg as well. So you might feel a little pull here. We're going to start off with just elbows up to the side, stack your hands. So elbows up to the side, stack your hands, rest your forehead on your stacked hands and just relax there for several breaths. It's another good release after having done um, saddle, which is intense. 
<clears throat> find that natural curve in your low back. And so we're working with that area. We're going to take our hands off our heads to our head off our hands to start with and bring our elbows down. Tuck your elbows like that by your ribs like little grasshopper legs. Palms are flat under your shoulder heads. Your head is just a few inches off your mat so your nose is is not too far off your mat and your eyes are looking down at your mat. Relax your bum, relax your legs here and notice that there's a little bit of work in your low back, some muscles working there to lift you up this far. Don't push in with your hands too much, make your back do a little bit of that work. Relax your legs, relax your bum. If this is enough for your low back, stay here. If you feel you can bend up a little more, slide forward onto your forearms. Make sure that your joints are stacked here, so elbow under shoulder. Nice right angle there at the elbow eye. You have three options for your hands. You can bring your hands together in prayer so you have a triangle shape. That's a favorite of Sarah Powers um, for doing this. And it can be quite nice. You can keep them parallel, hands flat. Or you can clasp opposite elbows. So any one of those, pick one and then stay with it. I'm going to be here four minutes. At the halfway point, we'll take it a little deeper if you like. So now here, don't let your head drop. Look on your, actually in front of your mat, so on your floor, about a meter is usually what I give as a guideline, three feet, and then close your eyes. So that keeps your head in a nice line, your spine in a nice alignment. Relax your bum, relax your legs. Feel that there's a little bit of work in your low back then, it transfers right there. It's good to ask our back muscles a little bit of to do a little bit of work, strengthening that area. So important to have a strong lower back since that's where so much of our movement comes from. You can push slightly into your elbows if you like, and you'll find that that, as long as that doesn't kick your bum and your leg muscles in, you'll find that increases the bend a little bit. Breathe in, you can breathe along your spine, start at the tailbone, inhale, pull your breath up the back of your spine to the base of your skull, exhale down the front of your spine, all the way to the base of the tailbone. That helps move energy upwards, not so much in the beginning of the day, but definitely by the end, our energy tends to pool at the base of our spine since we're on our feet or in chairs all day. This can give us a bit of a lightness feeling. Now we're at the two minute mark, so if you want to take this a little deeper, just a little bit, just open the legs. And you'll notice that right away increases the back bend. If your back feels pretty good, put your legs back together, wing your hands out so your fingers point to the side and push into the palms, straightening the arms, coming into seal pose. If you get up there and you find, oh, that's too much, then just go back to Sphinx pose and open the legs. Breathing in, breathing out. When you're in seal pose, you have two options. You can push into your hands and rise up out of the shoulder girdle. Make sure your butt and your leg muscles are as relaxed as you can. You can use them a little bit to take some of the pressure off when we're in this deeper back bend. The other alternative, if pushing into the arms and rising up doesn't seem to be quite right, is drape down into that shoulder girdle. So use your arms as posts, so they're still using your arm muscles, but you're extending a little bit into the front of the body, and you'll notice the shift kind of pulls maybe along the sides of your ribs, lower abdomen. So figure out which one it is that you need this morning. And here, if you're feeling like you can go a little more bendy, open the legs in seal as well. Relax. Breathe in. Breathe out. We're going to bring it into our neck for the last 40 seconds or so by pulling our chin in and then lifting the chin up towards the ceiling. Just as I said before when we were in saddle, this stimulates your thyroid gland. If you find you start to feel lightheaded, dizziness, bring your head back down. Don't stay there because some people can 
um, it, for some people it can pinch off the car carotid artery or even um, another artery that su supplies blood to the brain. Cervical, I think, in the back of the neck. This is wonderful for the ligaments in the front of your neck, giving them a nice pull. We tend to have our heads forward a lot of the day, especially with our handheld devices and work and play over computers. So this is a nice way to strengthen those ligaments too and offset that aging process of pulling our head forward. Now inhale wherever you are and exhale. Come all the way down. Slowly turn those elbows out to the side. Stack your hands with your other hand on top than when we first came down so it doesn't feel quite right. Rest your forehead back down or turn your head to one side. Whatever feels good. Puff your low back out with your breath. That'll help release it. If the legs were apart, move them back together. And then if you like, you can bend your legs at the knees and wave those lower limbs back and forth, windshield wiper style. Or maybe if your head's on one side, you draw up one leg and lie with one leg bent and one leg straight. Just letting that leave your body. And then when you're ready, let your legs come back down. Push up onto all fours, cross at the ankles, or swing your legs to one side and come to a seated position. <clears throat> this next one can be an aggravator of sciatica, so make sure you have something to sit on. Edge of a rolled up quilt or a blanket, just to elevate your pelvis slightly and um, tip it forward. We're going to pull in our right leg and extend our left leg out to the side like so. So this is called half dragonfly, half butterfly kind of as well, except our foot is in closer than um, it normally is. All right, so we've got that. Remember, you can always support under this right leg. Feel free to rest it if it's pulling too much or the knee is a little bit um, sore this morning. Now, we'll add that inhale. Oh, and if it's too much on the back of this knee, feel free to put a cushion or a block under the back of that knee. If that's a little too high, you can always use your hands under there when we get over there. So inhale over that left leg. Notice how you're twisting. And then on the exhale, start to fold over that left leg. Here you can let your head go and just dangle if you like. Notice that the tendency is to unwind a little bit, so try to center your um, breastbone over that knee so that you are twisting and you can feel the twist in the low back. Notice that your right quad and leg tends to want to engage so try to soften it, relax it as you're leaning forward. Don't pull yourself forward, let your arms be relaxed and heavy. Breathing in breathing out. So this is another good one for the back body where the urinary bladder meridian line its path runs either side of your spine. A nice gentle pull on the back of one hamstring at a time because it goes internal around the kidney area, connects to the kidneys urinary bladder and then it resurfaces this urinary bladder meridian line right around the center of the butt cheek and runs down the back of each leg. I mentioned the starting point of the kidney meridian is the pinky. The ending point of the um, ur urinary bladder meridian line, the pair to the kidney meridian, is in your pinky toes. Steady breathing. And the urinary bladder meridian line actually starts at the inner corner of your eye. It's the only one that goes through your brain. And it's the longest meridian of them all. 67 acupressure points along its path. Softening those legs. Relax your jaw. Find your breath. Breathe in. Breathe out little trickier but if you're not using a block 
underneath your knee. You can always rest it on your shin and then rest your head if you're finding that letting your head dangle is not so good. Steady breathing. Just another 30 seconds here. Find with these long holds that emotions tend to pop up sometimes, especially when we're in some of these deeper hip motions and with our outer rotation in our right hip here, we're getting some nice pulls there and down the back of the leg. Just try to notice emotions without getting too tangled up inside them. On your next inhale, bring yourself slowly back upright. Exhale when you get to the center. Lift this bent leg, the right one, pulling your left one. Swivel a little bit, you might find that's easier. So you've got a nice mat under your legs, straighten out that leg, bring in your left. Maybe this is the one that the hip is aching a little bit this morning or feels a little tight. So feel free, just like we did on the other side, support with a cushion or a block. Make sure you've got that slight lift and tilt of your pelvis. And then inhale over the right leg. Whoops. Reset this. And exhale slowly down, relaxing this bent left leg. That quad tends to engage. It's almost like it thinks, ah, we're falling, got to pull us back. So try to soften that one. Reach over, give it a massage if you need to. Use your hands beneath this knee if you need to take some of the pressure off that hamstring. Relax your shoulders. Feel that twisting motion that's happening in your low back here. A little bit of a pull tug on the left side of your lower back, maybe the top of your sacrum there. You can feel that tug and a squishing feel on the right. Let your head go if it's okay for your neck. Breathe in, slow down, breathe out, let go. Notice if you're hanging on to something. Maybe it's your jaw, your teeth are clenching, relax. Maybe it's the shoulders. This is another one you can enhance with your breath by Breathe, taking your breath to the bottom of your spine and breathing up the back of your spine to the base of your skull. Exhale down the front of your spinal cord, noticing how the front of those round bones are compressing. And as you're breathing up the back, the back of those round bones are getting pulled apart with the rounding of our spine. back to the emotions. This comes from Dr. Christiane Northrup and she wrote a book about women's bodies, um, women's bodies, women's minds, I think was the title of the first one. And this one comes out of her book, The Wisdom of Menopause. Um, she's one of the few Western doctors that treats a body as a whole. And she said, first of all, there is nothing to be gained by categorizing emotions as good or bad. Instead, think of them as guidance. The emotions that feel good are guiding you towards health, while the ones that feel bad are trying to get your attention so that you can change either your perception or your behavior. It really it truly is as simple as that. Changing your perception or your behavior. On your next inhale, bring yourself back upright to the center. Exhale when you get there. Help this left leg that's bent and set it down on its foot sole. Help the right leg over, set it down on its foot sole. Lean back on your hands. Just enjoy the release in your back, through your legs, your hips. 
Take your time and then either straightening, bouncing and rocking, or doing some windshield wipers. Think of your inner knee and your outer knee coming to the floor. Feel the rotation that's happening in your hip. Lovely. And then this is the one where, yay, we can do it because we're at home. We don't have to worry about mirrors in the club. So come to a wall if you can. You can bring your mat over or not. Or you can just lie a blanket down even. The floor is a little bit cold. Um, I'll move it away so you can see. Sit sideways against your wall like this. We're going to actually lie with our legs up the wall, but in order to get there, this is the way we line up. This is a great one to do before bed if you ever are feeling like you can't sleep. It's a great calming one. So once you've got your hip against your baseboard, lie down and then swivel around so that, and you kind of have to wiggle like a worm. Your butt cheeks are resting against the wall and your legs can rest against the wall. It's lovely. So you just have them up there, relax. Let the knees bend a little bit. It should feel fabulous. You can actually feel that blood coming down. Lovely thing to do if you've been on your feet all day as well. Remember I said about energy tends to pool. Um, and so this is a way to pull it back up again, nourish our core. Hands can be by your sides, palms up or down on your belly. You can have them in goal post position which feels nice on the shoulders. We're just here for two minutes. And you'll notice that they tend to, you can hear my move a little bit as they're relaxing. The knees will start to bend a little bit. That's okay. We're not in any kind of a yang style of pushing, activating muscles type of pose. If it feels good to have your arms out to, uh, in a T, then do that. Steady breathing in through your nose back out through your nose. Try to relax your legs as much as you can. This is lovely and safe for your low back as well. It's totally supported on the floor. a way to nourish, as I mentioned, your abdominal organs. The blood will come out of the legs where it tends to pool. Now to come out of this pose, just simply let your legs bend. They'll come into your chest. Turn to one side, doesn't matter which one. Stay there for a moment. Maybe push yourself away from the wall a little bit. Let yourself head rush sometimes, so we want to move slowly coming up from that pose. When you're ready, come up and go back to your mat. <coughs> Seated position. And then we're going to do that same pose. Basically, this was what we looked like, but our back was on the floor. But we'll increase it a bit now by doing, taking it into a forward bend. So again, if you have any sciatica issues or um, if you're a uh, cyclist, runner, whatever, hamstrings are tight, sit your hips on the edge of just a rolled up yoga mat or little quilt. Take an inhale and then start to lean forward on the exhale. You can again use your hands beneath your knees to take some of the pressure off them. Notice when we relaxed our legs up the wall how the knees tended to bend a little bit. So let them bend if you want. This is yin, not yang. Put a block underneath them. Don't pull yourself forward. Hands are just relaxed, palms up or down, doesn't matter on either side of your legs. Let your head go if it's okay for your neck. If it's not, then just keep your head in line with your spine. Or if you're not using a block beneath your knees, put a block maybe on your shins and rest your forehead on that block. And then you can relax your legs. Ride your breath in and out. Same steady counting as you had in the opening meditation. In through your nose, back out through your nose. 
This one is a lovely one for the entire back body. You can feel the pull right from your heels along the backs of your legs. Notice, is it an upward or is it a downward pull? Or is it both? You can find that hamstring insertion in the butt cheek center there, that tugging you're getting there. Remember, no pulling, it's just you're letting gravity do the tugging onto your body. Relax your belly. Let your shoulders go. Ride that breath in just like a wave coming in. And back out. Think, breathe in. Slow down, breathe out. Let go, relax. You can, if, especially if you're letting your head dangle, you can feel it right to the base of your skull, this pull. We mentioned that the urinary bladder is the long, meridian line is the longest line, the only one that goes through the brain, which I always find fascinating because so often if we have a headache, the first question we ask ourselves is water intake. How has that been? So even the West is there's another meeting point of philosophies, and we know the connection of water intake to our brain health. Kidney meridian line. And the kidneys, I always say this fact, the fact, it's amazing that the kidneys filter 15 gallons of blood per hour. 15 US gallons, a little smaller than Canadian ones, but still 15 gallons they filter per hour of blood. It's amazing. So you can totally start to get between the brain the filtering that our kidneys do, this need for plenty of water throughout our day. We're here for another, for four minutes total, so another about 40 seconds. Notice if you're hanging on to something, a thought, a part of your body that seems to be gripping that won't let go. Maybe you can move your arms a little further forward. Find a new edge. And remember, if you're feeling it, you're doing it. So your version of a forward bend, especially if you have disc issues, meant to say this, is keep that tummy pulled in and just lean with a flat back. And maybe you're getting plenty of sensation just with the legs flat on your mat. Maybe you lean forward a little bit more, but that might be as much as your forward bend is, or maybe it's even only here. Wherever you are, as long as you're feeling tugs, you're doing it. Now on your next inhale, bring yourself all the way back up to that L shape. Just noticing, enjoying that ah feeling. We love coming out of poses in yin. It feels fabulous. And then when you're ready, make your way down onto your back. You might want to, if you're not familiar with Happy Baby, you might want to just stay seated for a moment and I'll show you what it looks like. So you lie down on your back. We can make this a little bit of a core exercise by keeping our core in and lift your legs slowly with control together up into the air. So once they're up in the air, we're going to open them. Keep your feet flexed a little bit so it's like you're standing on your ceiling. Bend your knees down and see what you can reach up to grab on to. Let's reset the timer here. There we go. So it might be the backs of the thighs. The knees are apart, so let them come as wide as they can. Think about them coming to your mat on either side of your ribs, okay? Maybe you can grab the calves, and we're always grabbing from the outside, not the inside, from the outside. Maybe you can grab the ankles. Now we're not pulling, but we're going to hang on and then just relax our arms so that our arms are acting as weights here. Maybe some of you can reach up and grab the outside of your um, feet. And that same thing, you're not pulling. It's not a, not right now. Anyhow, we're just finding this pose. Hang on to the outside edges of your feet, not the inside, from the outside of your legs. And then relax your legs here. 
This is an intense compression in the front of the hip joint. This is also a good strong pull along the inner lines of your legs and into the groin. And it also, you'll feel it probably deep in the butt cheek. Now put a little bit of pressure on your arms. Use your arm muscles just a little bit. We're not going crazy here because we already have a lot of um, pressure in the hip joint. But use your biceps just a little bit. Make sure that you're not gritting your teeth when you do that and you're not engaging your shoulders too much. Make sure we keep this time good. And now relax your arms, stop pulling. Just let them hang there, acting as weight. Your legs are as relaxed as possible, and those feet are perpendicular to the floor. So remember, like I said, you're standing on the ceiling. Now rock over your spine. should feel lovely massaging your spine. We've done a lot of spine work, so this should feel really nice. And then finally, see if you can curl up, touch your toes to your nose, Give them a little kiss, touch them to your forehead, wherever you can, do it in your mind's eye, and then let go, letting those legs float on down till they rest onto the floor. Let your arms relax. Enjoy that delicious letting go as the blood rushes back through all those areas, removing toxins and nourishing at the same time. If you need to do windshield wipers, if that feels good on your back, great. And then we're going to stretch out our legs, slip on a hoodie if you like, as we'll do our twists. <clears throat> and then our um, final relaxation. All right. <clears throat> so we're gonna let our knees bend and drop over to the right side. I'm going to do something a little different with our arms today, something that Sarah Powers does too. If your knees are pretty high, I'll, I'll swivel around so you can see <clears throat> if you need to. If your knees are up, say high like that, then grab a block, let them rest on a block. Arms are going to start out in a T. You can scoot your right hip under a little bit as well and let them come over. Sometimes it's nice to put the block between the knees like that and then let this top leg relax. So our arms are out in a T to start off with, but at this point <clears throat> we're going to slide our left arm along the floor, bringing it up by our ear. So we have our arms actually now in an L shape. You can, if you like, bring your left hand down, rest it on the top outer edge of your top knee. Now your head is, the back of your head is on your mat. And you can move um, the impact of this twist um, just by turning your head. So if you turn your head into that left arm, looking towards it, that should impact your upper back. Take several breaths there. Relaxing that arm. And if keeping it up straight starts to make tingling happen, then don't do that. Put it into the goalpost. Bring it lower. So that you never want to stay with tingling. could indicate the beginnings of a nerve getting pinched, and we don't want to do that. Now turn your head the opposite way. So now you're looking out towards the right. And that should impact your shoulder. Take several breaths there. Figure out which way you want your head. And if turning it is not good for you, then don't turn it. Keep your head flat on your mat. Still using your yogic breath. So in towards that arm is the upper back that gets impacted away from the arm is the shoulder. Breathe in. Breathe out.
twists or releasing tension that might have built up in your spine over the last not quite hour. So for that reason, they're so beneficial for our spine. Now, inhale your legs back to the center. Let your arms come down, push into those feet, push your hips up into the air so you realign your spine, set your hips down, and then we'll go to the other side. So drop your knees, maybe scoot that left hip under a little bit, drop those knees over to the left. Arms are back out in that T. Slide your right arm up along by your ear, letting it relax there. Reach down with your left hand, rest it on the side of the knee. We're not pulling, we're just resting. So I like to get my fingers in the pit of the knee and then I can relax that arm and it's just a little bit of extra weight. If it's too much or you don't find you can be comfortable here, then leave your arm on the floor in a T position. Now try both, even though you probably know which way you're gonna end up. Turn your head into that right arm that's along the ear ear. Notice how that impacts your upper back. Maybe sensations shift a little bit. And then turn your head away. And that should impact the shoulder. Again, remember, bend your arm a little bit if any tingling starts to happen. Think about your ear if you're looking away from the shoulder from the arm if you're looking out to the left think about your left ear coming to your mat steady breathing in through the nose back out through the nose so twists release tension but they also help to restore equilibrium within your nervous system. So we tend to wreak a little havoc, I like to say, with our nervous system throughout a yoga class where we're trying to remain calm, centered, breathe while we're doing some not so comfortable poses. And so at the end with this twisting and this calmness, it just helps to reset everything so we have that ah, feeling now inhale slowly your knees back up to the center push into your feet lift your hips off your mat set them down so you realign your spine bring your arms back down <clears throat> this time you can bring your knees into your chest, wrap your arms around your shins, give yourself a hug, squeeze those legs in, maybe rocking over that spine, massaging, take your time. A nice thing to do after lots of spine work is plant your palms on your kneecaps and push those knees around in nice gentle big circles a few times one way. And then a few times the other way. You can feel how that massages from the sacrum up to the middle of your back. Very nice. Squeeze up into a tight little ball when you're ready. Squeeze, make a pruned face. Squeeze your mouth, your nose, your eyes, your ears. Tight, tight, tight. And then with a sigh, let everything go. And straighten out your legs if you like or take final Shavasana with your knees. Bent inner knees resting together, arms by your sides, palms up or down. Take in a deep breath and let it go with a sigh. One more time, deep breath in, let it go. I'll stay with you today for relaxation. You'll hear chime, little shingas here when it's time to come back to your room. So let your breath be whatever it wants to be now. Relax your entire body, filling your body with a warm, healing light of relaxation. From your toes, let this light rise up through your legs, your hips, 
into your torso, relaxing. Let this light, this warmth flow into your shoulder area and down each arm, having maybe a ball of this glowing light of relaxation resting in each palm. And now from your shoulders, this light flows into your neck, relaxing your neck muscles, into your head, relax your face, all the tiny muscles around your eyes, nose, ears, mouth, relax. Let your forehead be smooth, open, like a child's. And now this healing light of relaxation flows to your scalp. You're glowing warm and heavy with this light of relaxation. Float away to a happy place or stay within. But whatever you choose, take rest now. Just for the next couple of minutes, let your body absorb the benefits of the practice in Shavasana. come back to your room, hearing the sounds around you, feel the air on your skin. And just gently bring yourself back, wiggling fingers and toes, making circles with those wrists and ankles, turning your head from side to side. And then sweep your arms over your head for a full body stretch. And then those arms come down, legs glide in, turn over to your left side and pause there for a moment. Take time to notice how you're feeling. Notice the quality of your mind here. Maybe there has been that subtle shift from the beginning of the class. Know that this is your true nature and you can come back to this feeling anytime. Push into your mat with your right hand and help yourself back up to a cross-legged seat. Hands come together in prayer at your heart, eyes closed. Thank you so much for joining me this morning and sharing this practice of yin with me. The light that is within me honors the light that is within each one of you. Bow forward, sealing your practice. Namaste, my friends. Have a wonderful day.